It all began five years ago when I visited my aunt. At that time, she had recently purchased a house. She had owned the house for only about a week and hadn't fully moved in yet. She was still living in her old apartment since it was closer to her workplace, planning to gradually move her things into the new place. My aunt had been separated from her husband for a long time and she had a daughter, but they didn't live together. Her daughter stayed somewhere else. They had talked about moving into the new house together and then moving out of their respective apartments completely after settling in. I arrived at my aunt's new house around 8 p.m. It was a charming place, tucked away on a hill with a multi-level design. The entrance opened directly into the living room, a home office, and the kitchen. To the left, a staircase led up to three bedrooms and a cozy sitting area. When I arrived, I greeted my aunt and cousin, we shared dinner, and then everyone headed to our rooms for the night. The next morning, my aunt told me that she had bought a new shelf and needed my help clearing out the storage room behind the kitchen so she could install it there. When I stepped into the storage room, I was surprised by how cluttered it was, filled with all sorts of items left behind by the previous owner, as if they had abandoned everything. Curious, I asked aunt if the previous owner didn't want to take their things back. She explained that the previous owner had a new American husband and moving all their belongings would have been too troublesome, so they decided not to take them. After showing me the storage room, my aunt and her daughter left for work, leaving me alone in the house. To reach the storage room, I had to pass through the kitchen, which had decorative niches along the walls. Inside those alcoves were various items, including a sensor-activated doll. Whenever someone passed by, it would sense the presence and play a pre-recorded greeting. Hello. Welcome. That afternoon, around 5 p.m., as I was busy clearing out the storage room, I suddenly heard the doll chime. Hello. Welcome. At first, I thought my aunt and cousin had come home, so I stepped outside to greet them. To my surprise, there was no one there. What unsettled me even more was the sight of a wheelchair positioned at the dining table, as if someone had intentionally placed it there. I was bewildered. I was sure it wasn't there before. Trying to shake off the eerie feeling, I convinced myself I must have just overlooked it and returned to organizing the storage room. By 6 p.m., I heard my aunt and cousin coming home, so I went to greet them. But as I walked past the dining room, I realized the wheelchair was now gone. I figured one of them had moved it and didn't think much of it. After dinner, however, I noticed the wheelchair again. This time, it was placed near the computer desk in the home office. I assumed either my cousin or auntie must have moved it once more. That night, my aunt and her daughter left the house to run some errands, and I stayed behind, continuing to organize the storage room. Auntie had mentioned that if I found anything I liked among the items left behind by the previous owner, I could take it home, so I focused on sorting through the stuff. As I was sorting, the same voice rang out again. Hello. Welcome. This time, a chill ran down my spine. I knew I was the only person left in the house. I tried to calm my nerves by listening to music on my phone, but the voice kept repeating itself more than five times, each time about 30 seconds apart. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. I started to feel unnerved and wondered if the noise might be triggered by a rat or some other small animal. Even though I was scared, I felt the urge to find out what it was. So I walked out of the storage room to investigate, but as I stepped into the hallway leading to the kitchen, I froze in terror. There, in the dimly lit corridor, the empty wheelchair was positioned directly in front of me, blocking my path. It was facing me directly, as if someone were sitting in it, watching me. Panicking, I ran out of the house through the back door, trembling and struggling to catch my breath. I stood outside in the darkness, trying to gather my thoughts while shaking uncontrollably. It took a while before I finally managed to calm down enough to go back into the house. I hurried inside to grab my phone and wallet, then quickly got out and messaged my cousin, telling her I would wait outside until they returned and wouldn't go back inside alone. Although. I didn't tell her why because I didn't want to scare them. After leaving the house, I wandered around the neighborhood trying to shake off the fear I felt. 
until about 8 p.m. when my aunt and cousin finally came home. I hesitated but eventually shared my strange experience with the wheelchair and the doll making noises even though no one was around. My aunt tried to reassure me, insisting that nothing unusual had happened since she bought the house, but I noticed a strange look on my cousin's face as if she knew something. That night, I couldn't sleep and stayed up scrolling through my phone. Around midnight, my aunt came out of her room to get a drink from the kitchen. I heard her muttering under her breath, and suddenly, she let out a blood-curdling scream. <coughs> then, I heard the sound of her frantic footsteps rushing up the stairs, followed by the loud slam of her bedroom door. My cousin and I rushed to see what was happening. My aunt was sitting on the floor, her back against the door, her face pale, and her hands trembling. Moments later, she finally managed to speak, her voice barely a whisper. She described how she had gone to the kitchen and noticed that the fridge door was open. Thinking it was strange, she called up to us, asking who had left it open. But as she turned back around, she froze in horror. There, in front of the fridge, an elderly foreign white man with thinning hair, sitting in a wheelchair, his vacant eyes staring straight ahead. My aunt fled in terror, running up the stairs without looking back. All three of us were deeply shaken, too terrified to sleep for the rest of the night. The next morning, we left the house early and spent the entire day outside, avoiding any mention of the previous night's events. But I finally shared my own encounter with the wheelchair again, and this time, my aunt believed me, which only deepened our unease. That afternoon, we returned to the house, only because my aunt had invited her friend over to discuss business. While we were eating, my aunt's friend casually asked why we hadn't invited the foreign man to join us, commenting on how friendly he seemed. The room instantly fell into an eerie silence. Oblivious to what had happened in this house, the friend went on, mentioning that the man had even smiled at her when she came in. My aunt forced a strange smile and replied that he was a bit shy. I felt a cold sweat break out on my skin. I realized that my aunt's friend had also seen the same figure. My aunt quickly changed the subject and ushered her friend out of the house as soon as she could. Once her friend was gone, my aunt went upstairs to rest, looking utterly drained. My cousin and I stayed downstairs, cleaning up in tense silence. After finishing, we decided to head upstairs together, leaving the lights on as we hurried. As we made our way up, I caught a glimpse of something out of the corner of my eye that made my blood run cold. In the home office area, a bald-headed man sat in a wheelchair, the very same man my aunt had seen and described, staring directly at us, his hollow eyes unblinking. Panicked, I shoved my cousin up the stairs, slamming the door shut behind us. That night, none of us slept. We huddled together, waiting for the morning light. At dawn, we gathered our belongings and left the house, heading to Auntie's apartment. I never set foot in that house again. Not long after I returned home, I learned from my aunt that the previous owner of the house, an Indonesian woman, had lived there with her American husband. He had been paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair, and he had died of a sudden heart attack right there in front of his computer desk in that very wheelchair. In the end, my aunt decided to sell the house, realizing that we could never live there peacefully.